If you've looked into any piece of culinary history, you might have heard the story of how salt and pepper came to dominate the table, at least in the Western world. That version of the story you probably heard went something like this. In the 17th to 18th centuries, French King Louis XIV was a picky but voracious eater. Some of the only spices he enjoyed were salt, pepper, and strangely parsley. While salt was common and pepper accessible, it was this picky behavior that cemented the two spices as integral to French cuisine, itself foundational in what we now know as the Western diet. But here's the thing, I can't find where that story originated. It seems to be circulated around various food blogs, Reddit, or other untrustworthy sources. I went through more reputable culinary histories, Google Scholar, and textbooks, but I couldn't find a proper reference. It could be real, so please correct me in the comments, but as far as I can tell, that's not how salt and pepper got popular. In fact, some have called the pairing a historical accident. So what actually happened? Here's the inaugural episode of A History You Didn't Ask For, Why Salt and Pepper. If you look on nearly any table serving Western food, you'll notice two ubiquitous items, a salt shaker and a pepper shaker. More specifically, it's table salt and cracked black pepper. Throughout the video, you'll notice that I'm referring to primarily Western diets, and while salt and pepper might be now more diffused, its origins as a pairing are European. Other cultures feature spices like cumin, paprika, cinnamon, or harissa. To them, that's a ubiquitous table condiment. For the purposes of this video, I'm focusing on salt and pepper. It's easiest to start with the history of salt, because without it, modern food systems could not have existed. The oldest city in Europe, Solnitsada in Bulgaria, was once a salt mine, providing the area now known as the Balkans with salt since as early as 5400 BCE. Before that, early humans simply followed animals to their salt licks. As agriculture developed, humans needed to supplement their increasingly grain-heavy diet with salt, which they originally got from meat-heavy diets. But underground salt deposits were beyond reach, and the salt sprinkled over the earth's dried and living seas was insufficient. That scarcity kept the mineral precious. As civilization spread, salt became one of the world's principal trading commodities. As towns like Solnitsata popped up, salt became more accessible. This wasn't only happening in Europe, but all throughout the civilized world. In the early years of the Roman Empire, with the growth of Rome, roads were built to make transportation of salt to the city easier. Salt wasn't just popular in Rome. Salt was incredibly important to most peoples of antiquity. In the 6th century, for example, Moorish merchants routinely traded salt for gold an ounce for an ounce. It was used as a preservative, since it could keep fruits or meat from rotting, which was vital as food became an agricultural activity rather than one of hunting or foraging. It also enhanced the flavor of food, the first inkling of its place on the modern table. And our bodies need salt. It regulates fluid balance and helps nerve and muscles function. It's easy to see why salt established such a foothold in cuisine across the world. It wasn't just an additive, but in many ways a necessity for modern existence. But pepper isn't. So why is it on the table? Black pepper, or just pepper as we know it, is native to the Malabar coast of India and was used in cooking on the Indian continent as early as 2000 BCE. As civilization developed, so too did the pepper trade. From the Malabar coast, pepper was sent to Rome, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Yemen, and further. Pliny the Elder, the famous Roman historian, complained about how much the Malabar coast drained money from Rome because of the desire for pepper. It's no wonder that it was a common, albeit expensive, seasoning in Roman cuisine. From Rome, pepper pushed into Europe. In the Middle Ages, pepper was still a luxury for Europeans. It had to be grown in tropical places, so it was all imported. Despite modern claims that it was used to preserve and sometimes hide the flavor of rotting meat, it was really just a fancy seasoning, much like paprika or cumin or any type of herb. Salt still stood out as both the primary preservative and the ubiquitous seasoning of the time. But at last, salt and pepper were in the same place, at the same time, and accessible. During the Middle Ages, spices were used heavily. Salt continued to be omnipresent, and pepper was a heavily used spice, but in the kitchen and not on the table. But both the belief that they held medicinal properties and the wealthiness associated with spices faded. And here is the coincidental accident of history. In France, the rise of haute cuisine, haute cuisine, or high cooking, pushed spices to desserts. Salty and spicy flavors weren't well received in dessert menus, so they remained in the savory menu items, which are, unsurprisingly, mostly the appetizers and main courses. This is probably 
probably combined with the fact that pepper, while offering some flavor and kick, does not overpower flavors as New World chilies or cumin or paprika might. Hey, editor Tritox here. Sorry I sound hoarse, I'm sick, but I left this bit out of the original script and I think it's important I bring up. The French chef Francois Pierre de la Varenne is said to have first combined salt and pepper in order to satisfy King Louis XIV's picky taste. That is only partially true. In reality, he focused on the flavors of wine, butter, salt, and pepper that brought out or enhanced the flavors of other ingredients, and he didn't do it to appease the king. He was revolutionizing a whole type of cuisine. He happened to do so during the time of King Louis XIV, who happened to be a picky eater. The connection between the two is possible, but could also be explained as historical coincidence. I couldn't find an exact source that tied the two together. As international trade intensified and pepper began growing around the world, pepper became more common and cheaper in Europe. This likely fueled its increased use in French cuisine and later in other European dishes. Salt was already widespread and relatively cheap, so they made an affordable and accessible pair. Despite our common conception of what salt and pepper look like now, notably in shakers, this didn't become commonplace until the 1900s. The salt shaker was invented by John Mason, the guy who invented mason jars, in 1858, but salt clumped with moisture and it wasn't really all that practical to use shakers. The average person kept salt in a bowl and pepper could be kept anywhere as it keeps really well. It wasn't until magnesium carbonate was added to salt that it prevented clumping and paved the way for the salt shaker emergence. It didn't take long for salt's second half pepper to get its own shaker too. It took millennia in the making, but it's hard not to finish the phrase salt and with the word pepper. The ubiquitous things we are so used to seeing often hide surprising stories about how they got there. Thank you.